195 meals. <laughs> 195 <laughs> meals is a lot without a break, correct? In quarantine? <laughs> yes. All right. Okay, Laura, tell us what we're doing today. Okay, so Kate, that was a really good introduction and a good lead up to what the menu is going to be for today. So thank you. Um, and since it's a small group, if anyone has any questions during this, like, please, please feel free to chime in. It's very rare that we get to have, I, I'm used to doing this in front of people. I've taught like at William Sonoma and Sir Top. And I'm used to having like feedback and seeing you in person. So please jump in with questions. If I'm talking too fast, if I miss something, if you just want to know something random, ask me. I probably have the answer. If I don't, I'll let you know. I'll get back to you. Okay. And I just want um, Patty to know that I'm going to be watching the chat. So if she has a question, she can just yes. type that in. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. So going up what Kate said, I worked with a lot of different people in Manhattan and everyone has a diet and everyone has a dietary restriction. And one of the things that I found the most was that people kind of confuse like healthy eating and like it didn't have to be nice or like you, things you would do on a weekend, you might want, not want to do on a weeknight. But I kind of came up with this menu because I think it's good enough or like it's simple enough for your Tuesday night dinner when you're trying to get things on the table. But it's also elegant enough that you can serve it to company and guests when you can start having people over again. So it kind of, it looks nice enough for your friends and like your family, but it's so easy and it takes no time at all to throw it together. And it's healthy, it's, it's like lean proteins, it's vegetables, and just put a little couple extra touches, which gives it like the next elevated level that you want to get to. But it's 6 p.m. here, and like Kate said, I'm hungry. So I always like to start classes with a little bit of a snack. And luckily enough, because I found um, in Spain, of all places, I found bratwurst, and that makes me miss my Wisconsin time so much. It reminds me of Summerfest, and like eating a big brat down by the water down there. And I actually found bratwurst in Spain. So we're gonna simmer some brats up in some apple spice vinaigrette and have a little bit of snack as we move oh, forward the menu. This is making me hungry. Oh, me too. So first of all, when you have your smoked sausages, I can, everyone we can see, right? Okay. So I like to prepare it, everyone can cut a sausage, you just cut it. But if you cut it on the bias, it gives it a little bit more of a nice look. It's just a little bit more, I don't know, I hate the word fancy, but it's just like, it's nicer than just a straight and cut like this. Which one would you rather serve to your guests? Probably the one that's a little bit, this one. Looks bigger too. It does, right? But it's actually not really. Right. And it's called cutting it on, it's called on the bias. So if you've ever seen a recipe on the bias, which is honestly, it's just a fancy name for the word angle because food tastes better if it has like uh, elevated words attached to it. And that's a fact. So we have that. You'll see me wash my hands like a million times. Obsessed with washing my hands, especially when cooking. First thing, it's literally the first thing they teach you in culinary school is to wash your hands. Seriously, that's the first thing they teach you. So we have, we're gonna use this with the apple spice vinaigrette, but don't worry if you don't have it. We can, you can use all of our dressings for all the different, for everything we're doing today. I would recommend if you don't have the apple spice vinaigrette, I would definitely use the Intiparissa or the beet goes on. I think that would be absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna tilt you down a little bit. I only have one, sorry guys. That's okay. Can you see the pan? Yep, we can see. I knocked you, sorry guys. You good right here? Yeah, we're good. So my pan has been heating up. I have a convection, I'm gonna put about I see about a third of a cup, half a cup of apple spice vinaigrette into the pan. You see how beautiful that color is? And the aroma must be amazing. Oh my God, it's amazing. It's, and it's raining here today, so it's kind of like dreary and just like the spice, it like, raises it up so much. And I have some one, I already did some. So we're just gonna, I have it just heating in here and this is the best part about it. It's gonna, you don't have, actually have to add any extra oil as long as you have a nonstick pan because there's just a little bit in apple spice vinaigrette, which means you don't need to add anything else. Keeping it a little bit leaner for you if that's something you're interested in. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, and all of our dressings here today, everything that we're using is gonna actually minimize your need to add extra ingredients. So when you're simmering something like the sausages in the pan, usually you might add like a little bit of garlic, a little bit of like shallots or something like that. You don't need to do that with our dressing. All the flavor is right in it. So we're gonna right. let these- Can I ask a stupid question? Yeah, no Bratwurst question, is stupid. Is, well, 
um, <laughs> considering that I lived in Wisconsin for 20 years, bratwurst, is it raw when you purchase it or is it like some sauce, you know how some things are cooked? Right, right. This one, well, this one, I always remember them being, um, uh, I, I actually grew up in Minneapolis where they're really popular too. And they were more like the raw ones. These are smoked. So I okay, so these are smoked. Okay. Yeah, these are smoked. Yeah. Which I know, I know Wisconsin. I know that means they're not like the traditional, traditional ones. But let's go with what right. we have. Right. But I, it sounds yummy though. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, mm -hmm. can, can you smell it, guys? Can you smell it over there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to show you. It's like it's starting to simmer. Can you see that in there? Yeah. Okay, and I can smell it. I mean, if you can smell what I'm smelling, you know it's getting there. And so. <laughs> You could actually serve these right out of the pan too, right? Like just pass totally. it. Totally. Yeah, yeah, with toothpicks. And what would actually be even wonderful too, um, we're doing ranch roasted potatoes. You could use the leftover potatoes and the sausages and have like a second dinner, like if you want. Right. To. So, and the good thing when they're smoked like this, they're super fast. If you have people coming over, it's always nice to have something kind of like simmering or in the oven yeah. so it smells like homey and cozy. And this is it for you. You could honestly just bring the pan out or put a little coaster underneath it so it doesn't ruin your table. And you have an appetizer ready to go. I'm gonna let that simmer while we kind of get ready to plate it up. Sorry guys. That's okay. Just to make sure you guys can see me. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Everyone, like, everyone good? Is everyone getting hungry? Patty, feel free to um, type a question. I'm, I, yeah, we're good. Okay, good. I'm going to go with a clean plate because you always use, I'm just like a freak about cleanliness in the kitchen. And I think it's, it's obviously why. Like, you just need to be like, sanitary. I have my uh, health professional like certification in the kitchen license and like it just makes me neurotic like my husband will eat food that's been like left out for like three hours I'm like bacteria so I'm just really high on like cleanliness so these are almost I want to show you guys one I don't know if you guys can see it it's starting to get like a little bit brown on top mm -hmm. it's like a little bit like the, the caramelization of the sugars and the apple spice vinaigrette the natural sugars is coming together and Laura, did yeah. you add any oil to the pan? None, absolutely yeah. none. I just relied on the uh, apple spice vinegar to give me the cap that I need. But I also do have a nonstick pan, so that's also why. I okay. Did. And we will. Oh, so so delicious. And then I have some fun little toothpicks. Because I think all food is better on a toothpick, right? We have, it honestly it comes together that fast. Since they're smoked, you only need like a couple minutes to kind of heat them up and get them ready for serving. A little fun plates. So you can put them on a plate or just serve them from the pan exactly. with the sauce in there, correct? Exactly. Also, okay. I would probably do if you served it in the in the pan with the sauce in it, have some extra bread so you can kind of dip the oh, rest of the sauce idea. up. Oh my gosh, right? So it ends up looking like this, like just a little bit, the sauce is reduced a little bit. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit darker in color. And it's like, it actually makes the flavors like more concentrated. Who's gonna make that? Is everyone gonna make that? Should we try it? Yeah. <laughs> it looks wow. really good. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go make that. Like, apple spice. <laughs> I'm going to turn around and like just make that during <laughs> the next thing. It's delicious. This would be so good too. Which, Even if you grilled it in the summertime, if you grilled the sausage and you kind of used it as like a basting. A dip. Uh, yeah, that would be or amazing. Just a dip. Yes, absolutely. There's so much flavor in the apple spice vinaigrette. Uh, can, Patty, what dressings do you have? Can we find out? Or at least what dressings do you have? Oh, that's a good idea to ask her. She might be, she's not answering, so she might be away from her computer. Oh, okay. Well, if she comes back, like, I'd love to know, is Elise there? Did, oh, yeah, you know I can, I can look up. Elise, what, do you have all of them, Elise? What I have all four. Okay. Oh, you do? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm going to look online and see, I could, I might be able to find Patty's, uh, what she ordered. Okay, so now, 
I think one of my favorite, maybe that's why I like Spain so much too, but one of my favorite things to eat for dinner is just appetizers. Like I could just eat the sausage and then the strawberry basil crostini that we're making and call it good. Like I don't need, that, that's my idea of like a really nice, like a, a fun dinner. And that's why I think the sausage is so good. Oh, here we go. She has ranch and Harissa. Okay, let's okay. talk about that. Oh, great. Oh, so the okay. harissa would be really good with the sausages too. I think the harissa would be amazing with the sausages. I think that would be, but I, I personally like love the harissa too. And I think that would just be a great combination. You could even do the ranch too. Like I think that would be, they're, they're so versatile. We have, now we're gonna do the strawberry basil pastini. And I'm cutting the bread once again on the bias, which just means, does it mean? Means It means on a slant. Exactly. So my bread is actually like almost like too fresh. I have to like let it like kind of like bounce back out. So I already did it and I wanted to show you. I cut it up like this and then I baked it just for like, my oven is really mm. fast. And I made these like gorgeous little toast nice. points. Just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt. I'm really partial to Himalayan pink salt when it comes to this stuff. But honestly, like anything is fine. So we have this is my favorite thing. This is like, this is the most gorgeous appetizer. It will be great at, at holidays because the color, and you can even use, if you use frozen strawberries, make sure you drain them. Get the whole ones. I know you can buy different types of frozen strawberries. If you buy the ones that are whole, like whole and frozen, those will work the best. And just make sure you drain it really well. So I have my, my whipped goat cheese. Biggest thing here, what you want to do, you want to make sure it's at room temperature. So take it out of the refrigerator at least three hours before you're going to start using it because you want to make sure it's like, it's super easy to move, mix around. It's completely safe. You don't have to worry about that. I would use, you could also use cream cheese if you can't find like a soft goat cheese. You could definitely use cream cheese. Um, you could even use a creme fraiche if you wanted to, but I think I wouldn't go any like lighter than that. But I think goat cheese or cream cheese would be your best bet. Laura, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, if you don't take the goat cheese out of the fridge, can you stick it in the microwave at a super, super, super low temperature for just like yeah. on and off? Like, yeah, I would do it on like 50% power uh, or, in like yeah, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in like 30 second increments to make sure it's like really soft. You could use too um, like a food processor or like a hand mixer too to kind of whip it up um, if you need to. I was able to because mine was soft enough to just use a spoon but I had mine sitting out for a while and it will just make it easier to spread. You could do this too with the apple spice vinaigrette. That would be excellent. Unfortunately, um, I know you have a harissa and ranch. This is probably the only recipe where those two might not be the best ones with it. But what you could do with the hint of harissa is with the cream cheese, just mix that together and throw some basil on top. That would be absolutely delicious. A little bit spicy, a little bit like sweet from the goat cheese, a little bit of fresh basil. That would be Perfect. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna, try that one. I'm gonna try. I know. I'm gonna try that one. Patty, your turn. Patty, you let us know what you think of that one. <laughs> so, I have. So I'm using the beak goes on. It's um. It's really smoky, like really intensely smoky. It reminds me of a barbecue sauce. My husband is obsessed with it. I have to tell him to stop using it. And I love, love the color of it. Now mine's a little like. I, didn't, I, I don't actually add that much. I added probably about two tablespoons of it. So I have about three ounces of um, goat cheese and maybe about a tablespoon or two of the beet goes on. Mostly because I want to just, I want to keep it this like light pink color because I'm using fresh strawberries and basil. I don't want it to be too dark. Because you know, when you eat something, you eat with your eyes first. I'm going to add just a touch of my pink salt. And do you see this color? Does it come through? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a light, light, like almost like, almost like, like a mauve or something like shade of pink with the basil. And that's the color I want. I want it to be like kind of like nice and light. Otherwise, it could, it could get too dark. And like I said, it's all about presentation. So we have our strawberries. It's strawberry season now. It's strawberry season there too, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have some garnishes, some like nice fresh strawberries we'll put around it. 
Then I also have, okay, let me know, can you, can you see this? Can you see me right here? Yep. So we're gonna, we're gonna slice the strawberries into really thin, small slices. I'm taking it right here. I'm trying to do it so you can see. Is this a better angle or is this a better angle? Probably this, right? Yeah. Just slice it thinly. So we end up like that, like little teeny discs. Everyone's about the same size. And if you had uh, fr uh, frozen strawberries and they were in the whole ones, you could almost do like a rough chop with them because you're not going to be able to slice them like this because they're frozen and they get kind of mushy, you know? But then kind of use maybe like a potato masher or like a fork to kind of like press them down. So it's like almost like a strawberry jam on top of the goat cheese. That would be excellent. There's always a solution. So if you don't like think, oh, I don't have fresh ripe strawberries, there's always a workaround. And also too, never ever apologize for how something turns out. Never like think you have to like, oh, it would have been better with fresh strawberries. Nobody knows except you. Nobody will knows. Your guests are just happy to eat. <laughs> We have this. Did you ever hear that story about Julia Child? She was having a dinner party, and you all know who Julia Child is, right? She was having a dinner party in France, and <laughs> their, her um, serving partner dropped a roast onto the floor. Like, it slid off her plate onto the floor, and she stood there calmly and said, pick that up and go in the kitchen and get another one. Now, there wasn't another one, but he knew. He just picked it up, wiped it off, and served it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Never apologize for your how it turns out because no one knows. And if someone says anything, tell them it's supposed to be rustic. <laughs> so we have little bit of toast. I'm just putting about, I don't know, maybe like two teaspoons or so on each piece. I don't measure, so, and you won't either because you're going to get so confident. But this is like just nice and pretty. What this is, do you see how easy this is too? You can easily serve it to people. So we have our pink little pink toasts. This is this would be great for like a little kid's birthday party or something. Like like a little like I'm thinking of like a tea time like little girl princess birthday party. This would be so good because pink food is more fun. I'm gonna put my strawberries on. I'm just gonna do it like layered on top of each other. This is where you can get creative. Like I said, if you only have like the frozen ones, it's fine. If you want to like chop them up and mince them up, that's fine too. Your recipe, do whatever you want with it. But I'm just doing it like little pieces like this. I need more. I need more. Because we're eating this tonight for dinner and we each have to have one of them, right? We can't, there's no sharing when it comes to this stuff. Okay, here we go. Look at this. Where's my basil? And I have some fresh basil. Let's talk about basil. Let's talk about herbs real quick. Do you guys do, uh, do you guys buy fresh herbs or do you tend to shy away from them? You do? Do you have an herb garden? Does anyone here have an herb garden? Because I'm kind of jealous if you do. Okay. Did you know that basil is actually, you, I, you do? You wish you did? I, I did like three years ago, but no, I don't. Did you know? I had one in New York. It, um, you know that you know those stupid um, like chia pets. They had chia gardens. I love it. It worked. I had like <laughs> rosemary from them. How crazy is that? So basil, I I love basil. Some people think it's a little like overpowering, but I think it's actually really good. But did you know what it can like? Did you know it bruises? Like it can like bruise if you cut it too hard, which is like kind of sad if you think about it. But I love basil. I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> and like the produce in Spain here is just absolutely insanely good. Like I bought strawberries and I had them in the kitchen today and my husband walked through and he's like, Oh, you brought strawberries. Like he could just smell them. Like that's how fresh they are. I love it. So I, I already washed this because germs. And here's how I'm going to show you how to roll. Someone, I have all my leaves kind of like stacked up like this. And I'm going to take it. Now, I don't mean to be inappropriate, but the best way someone described it to me in culinary school was it's like you're rolling a joint. <laughs> it's like it's, and you pack it like really tightly and you kind of just roll 
in a little in a little strip. So you get like, you know, joint. <laughs> Tightly rolled. And then you take your knife. This is how you ship an odd. You always ship an odd basil. You never mince it because you don't want to bruise it. But you want to get it hit enough so the flavors come out. I know it sounds crazy, but it's it's true. It's like such a delicate herb. Other herbs you don't have to be this gentle with, but for some reason basil, you really do. And I just take my knife. And here we go. Like little mm -hmm. bands. And like, oh my gosh, as soon as I cut it, it even just became more fragrant. Oh, you're probably a little bit here. Yum, that looks so good. That looks great. Ah. Uh, I have never seen that method of cutting basil before. And do you know how many cooking classes I've taken? Are you serious? I've never, I've never seen that. It's and it's it's perfect. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So, it's so much easier too, like less mess. Yeah. 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 So Yum. Pretty. Oh my wow. god. I'm making that as soon as I get home. I know. I, it's like, perfect for summer. Yeah. It is. I think I'm, I'm gonna take a picture of this when I'm done because I, I, I want this. Yum. Wow, it's so it's so pretty. If someone makes it ever with um, frozen strawberries, will you like email me and let me know how it turned out? If you make it like at Christmas, that would be amazing to serve at the holidays, like at Thanksgiving or something because of the colors. So if it's not fresh, like, let me know how that turned out. Okay, we move on. Just gonna... Should always could always stir the strawberries into the goat cheese if they're if the frozen are too you know soft. Totally. You know you could you know what you could even do too. I'm a little bit hesitant to talk about this, but I think you could if you had a good brand. You could almost use a very very high quality strawberry jam too, as right. long as it doesn't have any like extra sugar or like anything right. like, like you know those like really good strawberry jams that you can buy that actually taste like fresh strawberries. Yeah, that yeah. would be a great. Yeah, there are some it. that don't have lots of sugar added or any or or any sugar added yeah exactly and when you open it you actually like see fresh strawberries in it like mm -hmm. that would be amazing with that and so much easier too the sarah beth brand is... That's exactly okay so now we've had a couple snacks and now it's time to eat right i kept my pork in the fridge because it's really hot in here one second um, oh, shoot, one, but. Oh, pork. I think he said pork. I was like, huh, I wonder why. <laughs> pork, wonder why? Pork. <laughs> like, well, let me just like, I'm in the land of pork right now. I'm in the <laughs> land of pork. Plus, I'm also just like, you know, even if I, my, um, my cousin lives in Abu Dhabi, and when they went on lockdown, he's American, and he, like, he's not Muslim, and he's like, they eat pork. He's like, the section of the grocery store, like they would, uh, ex American expats over there were like cleaning them out of pork. They weren't sure when they were going to get back. He's like, I have to have my pork. <sighs> okay, so we have our pork tenderloin. Look at how, I mean, this is just so gorgeous. It's like nice and big. And like so, so lean. This would probably be enough for like four to six people. And it's about uh, just under two pounds. Okay, so in case you're wondering like how, what size I got. I'm going to marinate this. So this is for you to do now and then eat tonight because I don't think anyone's going to want to eat pork right now at like 1130 in the morning. Maybe you are. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm putting my pork into the plastic bag. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm like super obsessed with germs, so I'm going to wash my hands. Not so much germs, it's just like food contamination. And I guess COVID has made us all like kind of germs. So really, I was doing this like long before anything told me to do now, I know, Patty, that you have hint of arista and ranch. Both of them would be amazing with this. I think the I I think the arista might be a little bit it depends what you want to do with your with it. You could do like more like an Asian style dinner if you did the the harissa, but that's not to say the ranch would be delicious too. But we're gonna do apple spice. So again, I'm pouring in, I have I'd probably do about a half a cup. A third of a cup, half a cup, depending on how much you have. And again, like we talked about before, you don't need to add like any garlic powder. You don't need to add onion powder. You don't need to add, well, we're going to add some soy sauce, but you don't need to add anything else. You don't even need to add any acid. Like you might do that in like a traditional marinade, like maybe some like lemon or something. You don't need to do that. This has it all. Like the citrus in the apples will come together. And I'm going to add some soy sauce. 
this is why I really like this recipe. I'm like obsessed with soy sauce, even though it kind of gives me, I'm allergic to peanuts and it, soy is very close to the peanut family and it makes me a little bit like tingly and a little bit of a reaction, but I don't care. I love soy sauce so much. Like I actually like before I bought for sushi or Asian food, I take an allergy pill. That's what I can. <laughs> In fact, I, I would, the, the light soy sauce is actually better for some reason, but I'm like, I can't, I can't, I want the real stuff. <laughs> I'll just take an allergy pill when I eat this. <laughs> What's in the apple spice vinaigrette is literally that and soy sauce. That's it. There's so much flavor in the apple spice that you don't need to add anything else. And Patty, for you, I would totally try this with Pinta Marissa and the soy sauce. That would be delicious. So I have it all in my bag in the morning. If you have kids, like, look, I'm doing this part. Get them involved. And then I squeeze out all the air. And again, I didn't add anything else, like nothing else, because all the flavor is with these two items. Yeah. And honestly, this is it. This is your dinner. This is your dinner. I'm going to put it in the fridge at least an hour. I did mine overnight because it gives it, I mean, pork tenderloin is like really lean, but it's almost too lean. Like it almost is like, you need to give it a little bit of a punch and like it absorbs flavor really well. So I would do this like overnight. It's just, or like in the morning, like when you get up in the morning and then like eight hours later when you have dinner, I would totally do that. The longer you do, the better flavor you're gonna get. I'm gonna, it's a little warm in here, so I'm gonna pop it in the fridge. Patty has a question. Um, yes, Patty. What is in the sauce that you're using? Oh, the apple, what's in it? Okay, it's actually, here's a little secret. I hit 40 and I can't read anymore unless I have my reading glasses. You want me on. to read it, Laura? <laughs> I have. Um, my mom would like be making fun of me. Yeah, I'm like, my. I don't have my glasses. I, I have one right here, Laura. Can you please do yeah, it? Thank yeah. you. Okay, um, it's cinnamon turmeric tea. Um, is the main ingredient C cinnamon turmeric tea yeah. uh, sunflower it's um certified non-gmo sunflower oil balsamic vinegar apple juice concentrate apple cider vinegar garlic lemon juice concentrate uh, turmeric sea salt mustard powder cinnamon acacia and xanthan gums garlic powder black pepper and cloves Wow, I know what all of those ingredients are. Yeah, exactly, right? You're not, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Right. That's why I, honestly, and that's why I feel so confident like cooking with this, with these products because you know exactly what you're, you know exactly what you're getting. And there's nothing, there's nothing in it that you don't want to eat. It's all extra, it's like, it's all, it's, it's real ingredients. And there's like a ton of flavors. So you don't have to add anything else. So we have, oh, my stuff doesn't. So now we're moving on to the ranch potatoes. I'm gonna cut up one. So I have everything already in the oven cooking because I wanted you guys to see the final product. And I don't want you to have to sit with me here for like another like hour while we're potatoes roast. So I'm sure you have everything smooth now that you guys are out of your lockdown. But I appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. So my potatoes are clean. I, in the recipe I suggested new baby or fingerling, but this is all I had available to me, like gold, but you found gold potatoes. So I would, the most important thing to think of like when you're making potatoes is they have to be the same size. Otherwise we're not gonna cook the right way. You don't have to measure them to make sure they're the same size, but if you have like fingerlings or baby potatoes and one's huge and one's small, just cut them in half, just cut the bigger one in half. It's not like, like you don't have to measure, but you just wanna keep everything around the same so they kind of cook at the same rate and it doesn't burn. Are you a farmer's market open there? Do you, are, you farmers market, are you farmer's markets open in Wisconsin yet? No. No. So I saw like in New York that they were still open. We're not, we don't have that here yet either, which hopefully, hopefully soon. Yeah. So these are, Again, like we talked about the whole, the olive oil in the pan with regards to the sausages. 
same deal with this. I am literally just going to use our dough cows on this ranch, and it has all the garlicky, all the dillness that you crave with a ranch, but this one's dairy-free, and it's, like, no added sugars. And it's just, it's a really, I think it's, I think it's really good. So I'm adding, I don't know, maybe like a couple tablespoons, two or three tablespoons of potatoes. Uh, here's a trick. When you see recipes that call for potatoes, they always say like half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of salt. Potatoes always, always, always need more salt than they say. Always. They, they just like, they suck up salt like crazy. In fact, if you ever over salt a sauce, a stew, a soup, throw a couple slices of uh, uncooked potatoes in the soup and it'll soak up the salt. So you can't, add always a little bit more than what they say in recipes because you can't have too much. And I am just literally tossing with the ranch and like as I would with olive oil and calling it good. And there will be so much flavor. Washing my hands again. There will be so much flavor in these without the added fat. Um, and you don't need to do any garlic. You don't need to do anything else with them. But like I said, you do need to add more salt than you might think because potatoes tend to need more salt than you might think. In the oven we go. Now let's talk again about some herbs. Parsley. When we talk about, we're going to need a lot of parsley now for the next two dishes. We have asparagus, a smoky glazed asparagus coming up and some um, parsley to go with our potatoes because I think Ranch and parsley on potatoes is absolutely delicious. Again, this is clean. This is, this. I've already washed it. And I'm just gonna kind of take a big mesh of it and just like go to town. Now you don't, what I like about fresh herbs like this when they're like nice and big, like look at how big these leaves are. I don't know, it's like, it's like steroid parsley. Like this is one leaf, isn't that crazy? Compared to like my thumb, can you guys get a perspective yeah. how that big that is? That's, I think that's huge. And I'm just going through and doing a nice rough chop. Now, I actually have so much parsley left over from this. A little quiz time. What do you, how do you keep your herbs fresh? Anybody know? I don't know the answer. No. My guess is to put it in um, like a napkin or a paper towel and yeah. maybe wet it and put it in the fridge. Yes. But I, exactly, like I have my basil here in like a damp paper towel and it will, if you kind of, I'm going to go back after this is over and like rewrap it tightly, but this will keep it fresh longer. And you should do this like right when you get home too. You should also clean your herbs like right when you get home because, and wrap it like this in case you don't get to something. And also, have you ever bought something and like you think it's fresh, but like a day later it's already wilted? Yeah, like this, and then this one they're already ready to go, and this will keep them. This will, that will, it works actually. You'll get a lot of time out of it. What's also fun too, you can make your own dried herbs and find yourself not getting to something. Just kind of put it upside down in your kitchen, like maybe against the wall, um, and let the herbs dry out, and you have your own like dried basil. I used to do that with some like uh, farmers markets when you can find things like tiger basil, like purple basil, mm. the more fun stuff like that that you just can't necessarily buy. Or because I, or sometimes like parsley comes in these massive bunches, you don't need all that. Do you have a parsley? Okay, so this is what I'm most excited to show you guys about. So we're going to talk about asparagus now. Okay, it, asparagus is still in season there, right? A little bit. We're still we're still looking at fresh asparagus right now. Okay, good. So I got some really gorgeous like jumbo asparagus today. I was so excited to find it. Like it's just nice and thick. I like, I had a client who hated the thick stuff. She loved like the thin stuff. And I had a client who hated the thin stuff and all of like the thick stuff. And that was kind of what I, oh good. You have some right now, Patty. Yeah, and I had to like keep track of who like what kind of size of asparagus because that's how picky people would get. <laughs> But I was like, hey, you're paying for it, right? Like, you're paying for the service. You might as well get exactly what you like. So I'm trimming off about, I mean, on this one, they look kind of woody. So I'm going to go maybe like, I'm going to go like three inches. I'm going to go like up to here, like three inches, because I just kind of want this part done. It's like very, you can kind of see where it starts to bend. 
mm -hmm. like right here. So I'm gonna kind of get all this, this part off. Done. And I'm just gonna lay it out here. No, I would definitely, Patty, you're in luck, hint of Arissa. This is excellent with it. I, it's the smokiness of the red pepper in here. Uh, it's it's going to make it pop. Like it's it's going to give it this great color because you're going to be yeah. See, she's excited. I can read her two ticks. It's it's just going to make it pop, and it's a, a great way to elevate like traditional asparagus and give it a little bit of a kick. So I have it's only two of us here tonight, so I just got a little bit. It's only two of us here every night. I'm doing about a tablespoon. Oh, I'm not. I'm doing like two tablespoons. I, I like it. I'm just gonna use my hand. As you can see, they've been cleaning so much. And I want to make it, I'm gonna show you, because I want you to see how it looks. If I don't wash my hands immediately after this dressing, you should remember this too. There's turmeric in it, it will get your hands like kind of yellow. So make sure you just wash your hands. So I use a little bit of like, a, I make it more like a glaze just because like I said, the smoky glaze asparagus, but I kind of use just a little bit less, but like run it around it. So it gets it kind of like fully coated. You see that? And that way the car, it'll start to like caramelize in the oven. The sugars will kind of catch it. The natural sugars will catch it and give it a great, you'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to pull some stuff out real quick. So we live in a very old apartment and it was built in like the late 1800s, but it's been remodeled, but like you can only do so much, right? My oven, because of the power in here, has a really great quirk. If the oven's on, I can only have one burger on the stove on. <laughs> if I have the other ones on, the power goes out. Like the, the, I have to go to the breaker and like restart the breaker. <laughs> And like, I don't know enough, I don't know enough Spanish to ask if this is normal. So I just kind of accept the quirk of the apartment and move on my day. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things like that when you live in a foreign country, you just kind of accept and move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, where's my Grimalata? Oh my God, I'll turn around. I'm getting, I'm so into this meal right now. So what is Grimalata? It's, yeah. yeah. Right? I know. I read her. Um, she said Julia Child had the same problem. She did. I actually just rewatched Julia and Julia. That's like one of my favorite movies. And I read all her um, her personal books and her autobiographies. And she talks about shallots, like how she had a hard time when she went back to the United States, like finding shallots. And you should see the shallots here. They look nothing like the shallots in the United States. They are, they're, they're massive. They're like regular onion size and they are delicious. And I know she, it's funny because when I first saw them here, I got all excited. It's like Julia talks about the shallots in her book. Nerd. Okay. <laughs> so gremolata. What is gremolata? It's basically, it's a nice way to say like topping. And it's, it's just like, it's just like, it's herbs, garlic, nuts, and maybe a little bit of citrus, but I'm not going to use the citrus today because of the hint of harissa. It's just a really elegant topping. You can put on anything you make. Um, you can do it on vegetables. It's great on green beans, great on asparagus. Um, great on like things like a uh, chicken breast, maybe a little bit of gremolata on top. It gives it a little bit of texture and a little bit of like a complex layer. So we have a little bit of garlic, our parsley, and some pine nuts. So you could use almond slices, you could use um, pumpkin seeds, anything that gives it a little bit of a crunch is what you want, but you don't want that much and you want to keep them about the size of a pine nut. And I know it sounds really picky, but that's the point of a gremolata. It's like it's like almost like kind of like a breadcrumby thing in your mouth, but with like herbs and nuts. So you'd want to keep it about the size of a pine nut, whatever you get. So just slice them up. And it, it's just a great way to elevate literally anything. Like, it, like you can do it and you can mix and match anything. It could be a basil, but I think parsley tends to be the most common one that people use with remolettas. Um You can also do like cilantro if you don't have an aversion to cilantro, but parsley is usually it's a, maybe just a little more neutral. I think parsley is pretty neutral. So I'm doing garlic here is super strong. So I kind of I pick the smallest clove that I have. Like fine. And this is where you really I want to show you the mince. You want to get this 
I don't want, I'm not putting the garlic in the oven because I don't, I don't really want to cook the nuts is what I'm trying to say. So what I want is the garlic to be super finely minced so I can, so it'll kind of cook off the heat off the, the vegetables. Cause you know, and you notice when you cook garlic, it kind of, it goes like from zero to frame, right? In like 15 seconds. If I put this all in the oven and let the nuts, I, I run the risk of burning everything. I don't want that. So I'm relying on the heat of the food when it comes out of the oven. Let's look at this. To kind of finish the garlic off. And I got it, got it almost like a paste. Do you see that? Like it's super fine. And this will like help the, the heat from the asparagus will like allow it to cook. And in general, I would take some of my, my parsley and I take some of my nuts. And give it a little bit of a, add a little bit of my salt. You guys can't see, can you guys see how messy it is in here? It's driving me crazy. I need a bigger kitchen. Laura, are the pine nuts roasted or, yes. or, or toasted a little bit? You know, I thought about that and I, I would, they're, they're actually, they're not, and that's okay. They just, I think they can get, I think they have like, it's not worth the risk you can run like toasting pine nuts. Like they can burn so quickly. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I just, they, I just yeah. don't think, I think pine nuts are delicious on their own. And I think that like the, the cost benefit of having to do that is not worth it, especially okay. when you're doing a dinner like this, where you want to be able to be with your guests, be with your family, and they kind of come back. Because the beauty of this is that you could do it all in advance and just pop it in the oven when you're ready to eat. And then just sprinkle and stuff on top when you're done. So this is my remolata. Mm -hmm. Yum. Yeah, I wish you guys could smell it. I smell it and I want to get, so this is the whole thing. Like my oven is on pretty hot right now because I'm kind of roasting the asparagus. I want you to see it. And then I'm going to, it'll come out like really steamy and hot. And then like I said, the, the garlic will help cook with that. And then have you guys ever like cooked nuts like that before and you burned it? Like it just, it's just too risky. I, I it's like, it's like I, I take it so seriously. I'm like, I, just, I don't think we're, I don't think we're up for that right now guys. I just, we, we'll, we'll save that for later. This is too risky. <laughs> Not during a quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's too much. It's too much for us to worry about right now. Everyone's emotions are all over the place. We don't need to add burnt nuts to our, our rubbish floor. <laughs> Take it easy on yourself right now, guys. Oh, I have, I have three burners, but when the oven's on, I only have one. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun. Okay, and it does that too, and I have it over the, the oven. Okay, so let me show you guys this. I'm gonna get a plate out, and we're gonna... I have my gorgeous asparagus. So what's great, you can always kind of tell, a little trick for telling when vegetables are done, is that they get like bright green. When you're cooking green vegetables, they turn bright green. So if you're doing like, if you're blanching them in some boiling water or steaming them, just watch them, they get like, they turn this like amazing shade of bright green and then pull them off. That's how you know, because you want your, you don't want them to be soggy, you want them to have a bite. And this asparagus I pulled out and it's like neon green. Mm -hmm. I hope that comes through. Does that come through? Mm -hmm. You see that? So then the harissa got, like, it's almost like, it looks like there's hardly, it looks like it's like glazed on. It looks like it's like kind of like brushed on and like kind of baked on there. If you kind of move your finger over to it moves, but it's like stuck on there. That's what we wanted. We wanted to see it glazed. Oh, does this look so messy? Because I'm so sorry. No, okay. it doesn't look messy. Okay, good. Only I kind of hit everything off the camera. So we have our asparagus and then I'm just going to sprinkle my gar. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. You guys should come over for dinner. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> And, oh, I got it. Okay, I wish you guys could smell this. But I guess take my, try it tonight, let me know what you, yes, thank you. Try it tonight, let me know what you think. Like the minute you put the hot, the garlic, the minced garlic onto the hot asparagus, I can't tell you how fragrant it is. It is, oh, it's so, no, I'm so ready. Like, oh my God, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so good. That's, okay, I'm very excited now for dinner. So, any questions? 
Everything looks amazing. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to show you guys a cork. I had it. You guys probably have. So like I said, I went through and just start moving stuff around so you can see everything. Oh. Can you guys see? Yep. Okay. So I have, let me just clean this off for a second. I want to get in and show you guys what I've been doing with. So we have the potatoes, they've been roasted, and I roasted them in ranch, and they are so crispy. So like, it's just so perfectly like soft, and I have some extra parsley. So I'm just gonna, oh, how perfect is that? And then we have our pork tenderloin. So I did this yesterday. I simmered, I marinated it yesterday. I tried a piece at the end in case you can't tell. <laughs> I did, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait, I had to try it. So we have this gorgeous little wine here that's been all marinated in the spices. And I'm just gonna cut it. Oh, wow. Now the thing about pork tenderloin, like we're not living back in the day where we had to cook it for like three hours and you feel like a little piece of rock. Remember growing up like that, like how everything was like cooked to like bone dry? No, not at all. Everything nowadays, like you just, you actually, like I have a little bit of pink still in it and that's what you want. Like I know it sounds scary, but it's not scary. It's actually what is, it's what we think of how it's supposed to be is not how it's supposed to be. And sometimes too, and I can't, speak for certain with this one because it's the first time I've done it to be honest with you. Um, sometimes marinades, and think about this like next time you're marinating chicken, sometimes marinades will change the flesh of whatever you're cooking, the, the protein. So it'll give it more of a pink hue uh, from like the acid in it. So it can be a little bit over, like you can look, cut into something um, and see it. And I, I can't remember exactly what the acid is that does it, like what it's called, but there are some marinades that will do that too. So you get like almost like freaked out thinking it's not cooked, but it is. Look how gorgeous this looks. Looks beautiful. Nice. Oh my God, it looks so good. And just cut it and let it all kind of like, you want it to rest for, I didn't do that because I wanted to show you guys that I would, when you pull it out of the oven, let it rest for about five minutes or so to kind of get the juices to kind of resettle and get back in. And yeah, this looks amazing. We are very excited now. Looks yummy. Thank you so much too, Patty. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Can you lift up the potatoes? Yeah. So here's what oh, we did. Very pretty. Oh yeah, that looks yeah. good. I'm a massive potato person, so I'm very, I made extra because I really wanted to have these tomorrow too with like a poached egg on them or something. And you cooked that in the same? No, I didn't. Oh. I cooked, okay. I, I, I have them, I did them on, let me show you, I'll show you the baking sheet. So I did it on a parchment lined baking sheet. Okay. I'm going to make these up too because I can have more tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I just, I, this is how I roasted them. I, I like to do my, and I have recipes for you guys too. I did them. Sorry, I'm gonna get this back here. I, I like mine really crispy, and I think that a lot of times it's like home cooks, like you can be a little bit afraid of high temperatures and heat. I recommend going around 425 to almost 450 when you cook your potatoes and it'll like crisp them up. Yes, you have to watch them, especially if your oven runs hot like mine does, but it's worth it. And so the potatoes just have the ranch and just, salt. Uh, just ranch and salt. And That's salt. It. And then you just put nope. parsley on top, right? I sure did. In fact, I'm going to add a little That looks great. Because... I, and Laura, you know, how would you, sorry, how would you yeah. suggest um, serving the pork? Do you do a little drizzle of the apple spice vinaigrette over it just to make, yeah. it, you know? If you want. How would yeah, you plate absolutely. it? Absolutely. Let's plate. Mm -hmm. I would do, so I would, if I was doing this for, for real, like you know, at a dinner party for a client, I would take my apple spice. I would put a little bit on the plate. Can you see everybody? Yep. Yeah. 
I think I'm out of this one. Okay, so I have about just a tiny bit right here, and I would take a little bit of it and just kind of like brush it on the plate. And then I would plate it, just like a couple medallions on top of the sauce so you can still see it, and add a little bit of green because you can never have too much color pop. And then let's take some, this is hot. Where's my thing? I would take some of my ranch potatoes. And I actually tried these before we started. And I don't think, you could obviously add some more ranch to it, maybe on the side for dipping. But I think, they, I think they're flavorful, like how they are. But this is a lot of green in this meal, I'm not realizing. But, and honestly, if I was doing this for a client, I'm not going to lie, I would definitely use my fingers. <laughs> we may tell we don't touch all your food, but we do. <laughs> I, can get, I can get a better grip with it. I can get a better... Okay, this is like way too much parsley I realize now on the plate, so I probably won't have done all this. But I was so excited about the fresh herbs that we have right now that I wanted to use them all up. Yeah. yeah. So we have just like the apple spice underneath the pork, just because I think it has a ton of flavor, but underneath will give you just like a little bit more, but not overwhelm it. And then we have, we actually have all the dressings represented except the beet, which is in the snack. The ranch potatoes, again, you could obviously dip extra in it, and I think that's a great idea. But they have so much flavor on their own that you're fine that way too. And this, I'm going to eat the asparagus, like the first thing we do when, this, when I turn this off. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. That looks delicious. Doesn't it? I'm excited. My yeah. husband's really excited too. Did you? I hope you guys had fun. I had fun. This is totally. Yeah, I'm so glad we recorded it. I'm so yeah. glad we did too. I had a couple of people asking about if it would be recorded, so I'm really excited. And yeah. feel free. They're free. People like my email address is on there. Like, please email me if you have any questions. Like, if it comes up with like how long, like whatever. Like, I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Shoot Laura an email, or you can contact us through our website, just through the contact page. Um, we do answer and yeah, I'll emails. Get that too. Yeah. Thank you, Patty, and thank you, Elise, for joining us. This is so thank fun. You. Thank you, guys. I learned so much, and I am really hungry. I am too. <laughs> I'm going to order my groceries now. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to pour a glass of wine at 7 p.m. I'm going to for dinner. You go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to go have coffee. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.